Today, we take a good look at many things, including Lakehurst. What if they didn't give Degrassi problems? Kevin Smith and his involvement in Degrassi. And we also look at Craig and his bipolar problems. All this and more today on this episode of Cutters, Degrassi, What Ifs. To a brand new episode of Cutter, Degrassi, what ifs? And today we take a look at three new storylines. Storylines you probably think I would not have taken a look at. But anyway, the first one is about Lakehurst and Degrassi. Now, what we know from our first what if is basically Lakehurst being a rival school to Degrassi. We didn't know about Lakehurst at all as a school until season six, when basically that was when where Mia, a former student of Lakehurst, actually had a two-year-old named Isabella, and basically JT took a shine to Mia and Isabella, making Liberty a little bit jealous because, you know, Liberty was upset that JT and her broke off and basically all that. Liberty may have had some postpartum depression after having her kid and then giving up her adoption, but basically Liberty seemed to be a little bit sour and all that, and basically she didn't want JT being happy and all that. So basically, uh, JT and Mia were a couple. Unfortunately, though, there were problems as many Laker students were not too happy with the fact that JT had a romantic liaison with someone who was from the Degrassi, from the Lakers game, mostly Nick, the guy who basically was Mia's girlfriend before Lucas. And of course, Lucas is Isabella's father. So anyway, so anyway, yeah, they really want to beat up on JT. And basically, they go to a big girls basketball game just to basically try to beat the tar out of Degrassi students because, you know, they are upset that JT would take it upon himself to be with Mia. And so this rivalry would be a huge thing and all that. And it would carry into the birthday party that Liberty, I mean, Liberty was thrown by May and Emma. Basically, yeah. You know, And then all of a sudden, the Lakers students basically came by and killed JT. And basically, yeah, that was harsh and all that. Now, we don't know what led to the the Lakers, especially Drake Lampley, trying to get on him. But we know he was a part of Johnny DeMarco's gang and all that. And Johnny was shocked that Drake would actually stab JT. Was Drake act, acting on orders from someone else? We don't know that. We pop, well, you know, Nick just popped up in one episode and all that. But I think for me, it's got to be that Nick may have called the hit. Someone might have called a hit on JT or something like that. Just to cause trouble with Degrassi and Lakehurst. And all of a sudden, Lakehurst pops up out of freaking nowhere to be at Liberty's birthday party. Of course, the rivalry would take a big head as basically Emma was upset that Lakehurst was going to come to a truly in competition that Degrassi was throwing. And basically, you know, they killed JT and all that. And basically, why are we letting people from that school come into here? Because, you know, it's just going to aggravate it. And Emma was right. I mean, like, if Lakers had not been at Degrassi for a cheerleading competition, I think that Emma might have calmed down a bit. But it was also because, you know, Emma was upset that Manny wouldn't give her the time or date to talk about the deal with JT and all that. And Manny moving back home. That pissed Emma off, I bet. So anyway, yeah, Lakehurst was not too happy with Degrassi treating them poorly. And we don't know much about Lakehurst. And then Season 7 pops up, and guess what? There's some Lakehurst students at Degrassi. It's like, what? And the worst part is, Lakehurst burned down. So that means Lakehurst has to share with Degrassi. And there's a lot of animosity, especially from JT, because, I mean, from Toby, because, you know, Lakehurst killed his best friend. But then he learns to realize that, you know, not everyone in Lakehurst wanted to destroy Degrassi for what JT did to Mia, with Mia. So basically, he accepts the fact and all that. I think Emma finally accepts Lakehurst. But anyway, Lakehurst brought, actually, Lakehurst students actually came in and they were huge. They, number. they had Sav, they had 
Anya, they had Holly J, they had uh, Damien, they had, I wouldn't say Darcy, but I'm wrong. I don't know. Many other Lakers students. Shantae? No, wait, Shantae was in season four for some reason. That's right. So anyway, yeah, those Lakers students came in and they basically became part of the Degrassi lexicon. And basically we were promised the fact that after Emma's class would graduate, that basically Emma and them would, you know, that would be the end of Degrassi once and for all. And, you know, things would happen. But, of course, we were told that. And we, they lied. CTV, I know, lost rights to Degrassi because, you know, after season seven, the viewership dipped out and then they gave it to MTV Canada or Much Canada, I think. MTV Canada. And they basically ran with the telenovela stuff and all that shit in season 10. But of course, the big what if is what if Lakers was not merged with Degrassi? Well, you can look at it a couple of ways. The main way to look at it is basically, you know, the Degrassi people actually did have an inkling that they were going to stay on after season seven and all that. Season seven should have been the perfect finale and all that. Like that episode with Honor JT, that was supposed to be the perfect finale. But in a way, I think they kind of knew that it was being renewed. So they basically had to come up with some new students for Degrassi and all that. Because basically, you know, Paige's group and Emma's group have graduated and they didn't really develop characters for from other classes, like younger people, maybe Danny and Derek, but like, fuck, all that. I know they became central figures in season eight and all that. And also in season eight, we learned about the chef who was the late Chris principal before the school burned down. And he never, and I always thought he came to Degrassi in some kind of um, form after like Curse burned down, but no, he wasn't. He wasn't around like Curse. And uh, then all of a sudden, he becomes principal when Hatzalakos goes to Saskatchewan to deal with her ailing mother. And then basically, Shep ruins the school by basically, you know, favoring Lakehurst students over Degrassi students and basically brought over brains. But unfortunately, he lasted one season before Hatzalakos came back and all that. But yeah. I mean, I can kind of guess that, and then we probably would have had our perfect ending season seven. Yeah, these kid, these students come by for one season and cause trouble. But then basically, you know, they probably do it in a way that says, who cares what Damien is up to after season seven? Who cares about Holly J or Anya or Sav or Mia? Basically, yeah, we wouldn't have cared much, but I guess they gave them good storylines that they wanted to continue on the storylines with them. Although it was probably set to be done after season seven. But it's also the fact that basically Lakers, without being there, what would season seven have been like for Degrassi with Lakers not getting involved? Well, I don't know. I mean, like Toby would not have had romantic interest in Holly J. Uh... The Lakers students, when we like Johnny and them, would not have tried to make trouble for Simpson after Darcy inappropriately accused him of stuff. Basically, Lakers was why Snake couldn't come back to the school. Basically, they thought that he was a pedophile. And basically, Damien would not have been in, in Emma's life or Manny's or Liberty's life. Basically, Emma, remember, in season seven, lost Sean because he went to the army. But it's like, well, Emma didn't really have a boyfriend for the longest time in season seven. I think she was still stuck on Sean. But basically, yeah. I mean, they actually helped out with some storylines and all that. And you can agree or disagree that it worked out. So, yeah. So, I think that was pretty much it. That basically, we would have seen Degrassi end after seven seasons. Heck, Degrassi High and Junior High went for a combined five, year, five seasons. So, like, you know, it would have been longer. Anyhow, number two on the what if list has to do with Kevin Smith. Now, as everyone should know, Kevin Smith is a great comic book fan and basically he makes movies. The Jane Silent Bob franchise and also Clerks. I think they did Clerks 2 and all that. I forget what else Kevin Smith was in. But anyway, Kevin Smith actually had a boner for Degrassi. And basically he loved Degrassi 
growing up and all that and wanted to be in a Degrassi episode. So the writers decided to put him in one. So basically in season four, yes, that season, the season that had Rick Murray basically shake things up by his death and all that crap. They decide to have a Jay and Silent Bob movie be filmed right at Degrassi. And like, it's like, how the hell did Degrassi end up allowing them to shoot a, a movie in their at the same in the same year as they basically had a school shooting embarrass their pride and all that shit. But yet maybe Degrassi was looking to raise its image a bit. Nah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, Degrassi, yeah, he was there for the finale of season four and all that. And then all of a sudden, Kevin Smith actually had a boner for Caitlin or Stacey Michigan, the actress who played her. But anyway, he caused trouble for uh, Caitlin, especially when Joey was trying to get a relationship in with Caitlin and all that. Unfortunately, though, Joey loses Caitlin to Kevin Smith in a sense, and Joey basically moves with Angela to Calgary. That was the plan the whole time. Season four, you know, he had troubles and all that. And Caitlin helped bail him out from house troubles. I mean, Caitlin should show more gratitude towards Joey. But I guess they probably wanted to end this Joey and Caitlin, will they, won't they crap. So basically what you got is Kevin Smith just burgeoning his way, bludgeoning his way into Degrassi and basically appearing a few episodes and basically breaking up the Joey Caitlin storyline and then causing a little bit of friction, especially with Ashley and Craig and a few other things. But I mean, the movie sounded good. Jane Silent the Bob, you gotta like it. And Alanis Morissette was the principal. The Alanis Morissette. Not a stand in, but the real Alanis Morissette. How ironic. He ironic. But anyway, in that, in the two parter, basically Craig is upset over the fact that Ashley's leaving for England. So he basically gets off his meds and all that and is in the boiler room. Which will lead us to what if number three, but I've got to talk about what if. So basically, what if Kevin Smith hadn't bludgeoned his way into Degrassi? I have no clue. Maybe we, well, as I said, well, the Joey Caitlin, well, they won't, they think. I think, personally, I think that basically Joey and Caitlin could have separated some other ways. I mean, Joey... Joey and Caitlin didn't have to be forever, but everyone thought they would be forever. After all, they were the power couple of Degrassi High and Junior High, and then Next Gen actually helped them out and get them together. But, you know, Joey had Sydney still. Like, you know, even if Joey wasn't with Caitlin, he had Sydney, but I think Sydney wasn't interested in Joey lost her and then basically moved to Calgary. Or maybe that's where Sydney moved to. But I like the fact, but I think that Joey and Caitlin probably would have been a will they, won't they? And who knows, maybe we'd have like a Degrassi wedding at the end of season four after all that turmoil. But of course, you know, it might have been in ill fate because, you know, after what happened in season four. That storyline basically ruined Joey and Caitlin. I know that, you know, the OG fans would have been happy to see them, but the NG fans probably not as so much. So, yeah, I think Joey. I think the Joy Caitlin storyline would have been they would have got married and all that. And it would have been a Degrassi event for the era, for the ages. And finally, what if number three? And this what if is basically speaking of the Kevin Smith one, remember when I said in the end season four that Craig had problems and got off his meds and all that? There's a reason for this third what if. So basically, I'll just rewind a bit. So in season two of Degrassi, we we're introduced to Craig, a photographer. Photographer. I think I spelled, I said that wrong. Look, I always do. He likes taking photos and all that. And he seems to have an interest with Emma and Angie, a little six-year-old. Emma is Angie's babysitter. But we find out that Angie is the daughter of Joey Jeremiah. And basically, Emma babysits and doesn't take a lot of money from Joey. And Joey says, I wish all kids were as great as you, Emma. But regardless, so Craig is basically stalking them. Unfortunately, Craig has a terrible home life as his mom is dead and his dad beats him. Mostly because, you know, he was frustrated with things. We won't know. We didn't know the scope of it until later. So anyway, Joey basically doesn't understand uh, Craig's problems. But then Emma and Sean basically tell Craig about his problems. Even Angie pipes in 
So basically, Craig lives with Joey. Albert, being Craig's dad, basically says he got into therapy. That was the wake-up call he needed. And it's assumed that basically he beats Craig over the fact that his wife left him. So we found out that Craig's mom left Albert to be with Joey. It's like, whoa, that's crazy, fuck. But anyway, Albert doesn't change his tone. He then dies in a car crash. Craig doesn't know how to feel about his dad's death. He's elated that his tormentor's dead, but he just can't have to feel about his dad. All that. Of course, Craig goes nuts at the luau dance, ripping down banners and all that, and decorations when he finds, when he tries to, when he tries to see if his dad's in the audience for a for luau king and queen, which he won with Ashley, I guess, out of sympathy. But basically, yeah, he did all that. But basically, he got calmer and all that. By the time season three comes by, he basically has a Leo sign with both Manny and Ashley. He loses both of them. And then, for some reason, he raises an apology sign and wins Ashley back. And Ashley had every right to get mad at Craig for what he did. Every right. Every fucking right. So, basically, it was weird seeing Craig romantically linked with two girls. The apple doesn't fall from the tree because Joey did that, too, in school's out. But by season four, Craig seems to be calm with Ashley. She's in the band, you know, everything's fine. And then all of a sudden, he, he starts acting weird. In the two part of Voices Carrie, yes, that one that had the subplot of Radish's Last Stand, if you will. Basically, Craig is invited to Ashley's dad's gay wedding. And Craig thinks he wants to be with Ashley so much. He runs out of a hotel room. He has, he gets her, uh, no. He pops her, he pops her cherry. She's now, she's not a virgin anymore. And basically put, you know, everything's okay. But then Craig thinks that they're together. And then Craig announces that he and Ashley are engaged. However, Ashley basically tells him that she's too young to get married. And Craig is just being weird and all that. Unfortunately, Craig's asked to leave the wedding because of his proposition. He tries to apologize for everything, but it seems to be bad. The worst part is he stole Joey's credit card for the hotel and he trashes the hotel room after Ashley rejects him. Basically, Joey gets a call from the hotel saying all oh, this damage and all that. And Joey also and Joey also suspects something fishy because he can't find his credit card to pay for the Chinese food. Thankfully, Spike steps in and gives money to him, to the Chinese guy. So basically. He's, like, unsure about what Craig is like and all that. You know, Craig shows disdain for Joey sometimes in season four because of the the living situations and all that. Joey's failed business. And then Snake basically says that, I see kids day-to-day, -day, Joey. I feel like Craig basically may have inherited his father's wacko genes by basically being out of his court. Joey thinks that he's just being a normal teenager. But then he sees signs and all that. And then Joe, and then Craig basically picked, I guess he sold his guitar or something. He gives Angie money to give to Joey. And then, like, he's going to head to Vancouver. He's going to run away and make sure that Joey doesn't know him. But Joey basically says, too late, I see you. And Craig beats up Joey, even though Joey says that, I want to help you because you're not well. And basically, Craig beats him up and all that. Craig realizes he's got off the rails and all that. He goes to the hospital, and it's diagnosed with being bipolar, kind of like what his dad was. Ashley stays by his side, even though that Craig says that you don't have to. Craig goes to a support group, and then basically he finds Ellie, who's in a support group for her cutting herself and all that. <coughs> Excuse me. And then basically those two hook up in a sense. But anyway, Ashley decides to go on a summer internship to England to be with her dad for business. And all that. And Craig's upset that she's going to England. Of course, what ends up happening is she stays in England. She finds a guy. Craig is really pissed off. And then, you know, I don't know about that. So anyway, is the big what if is, what if Craig was not bipolar? Or to put it bluntly, what if we didn't know Craig was bipolar? You can look at it two ways. One way is, what if Craig didn't have his bipolar problems? Well, it does explain his erratic behavior around girls and his erratic behavior around Joey. But you also, but it's also like, what if we didn't know he was bipolar? Now, I'm going to hammer this point with a next class thing because I, have, I didn't watch a lot of next class. 
and all that. But at the end of next class, unofficially season 18, if you will, because there were 14 years of Degrassi and then four years of next class, so that makes 18. So basically, in the finale of next class, Esme is shown being weird out, basically pissed off that Sick would be with Maya at the prom. Even though Maya tells Sick that Esme needs her more, that Esme needs him more than Maya does. Esme blows off at prom, injures Sick. Maya, of course, has her bit of fury saying that, why did I do that? Everything around me goes wrong, but Grace thankfully saves her from self-pitying herself. And then basically Esme buys Sick a motorcycle to make sure that he stays with her. All that. Esme is obsessed with Sig. Even has a threesome relationship with a polymorous amorous relationship with Frankie. And it's like, what the fuck? So basically she wants she wants Sig and all that. And all But basically Esme goes bananas. Maya tells Sig that she talked to the guidance counselor because she needed Esme to feel better about herself and Esme gets the help she deserves and all that. Or what we know. Now, I'll be honest with you. When they did that last exit video right at the end with the girl in the hospital, I thought that was Esme. Nope, it was Grace getting her lungs. I'm like, phew. I'm like, what? Yeah, that was the big storyline that was not resolved after next class was Esme's problems and all that. And I wish they helped. And hey, you know what? They also said they want, well, Jack Simpson, you know, Emma's stepbrother. And all that. Emma's little brother. Yeah. Well, good luck with that. That's not happening anytime soon, I guess. So anyway, um, yeah. It would have been just like Esme. It would have been like, well, would Craig have stayed for season five and six? He did. Would we have known about Craig's problems and what contributed to them? Possibly not. It was a good time to announce that he was bipolar, especially with the comparison to his dad and all that. I think people had the hunch that he could have inherited the bipolar trait from his dad, but it was confirmed for sure. I think Craig needed to learn to control his bipolar problems and all that. He did and he didn't. That's all I'm going to say about that. So anyway, thanks for watching this video. Have a good day.